we're going to talk about how we use polarized light or polarizing microscopes for studying uh, biological subjects, especially living cells. And polarizing microscopes have been used by crystallographers and mineralogists for many, many years uh, for looking at crystals and uh, natural minerals. Uh, but what we, what we need for biology is slightly different from what the um, uh, standard commercial polarizing microscope is. And therefore, I'm going to uh, make some demonstrations here uh, to explain how the polar porous microscope works. And uh, these demonstrations partly use crystalline material and partly biological examples. So what I have here, the uh, word birefringence, I hope you can see on your screen. And what I'm going to do is in front of this word, I'm going to place a crystal of calcite. Calcite is Iceland spar. And Iceland spar um, is a crystal calcium carbonate. And it's well known because it introduces birefringence or double refraction. Now, double refraction is the property that we use very often in biology. And one of the properties of this double refraction is uh, that the light that comes through the crystal before it's just a single image becomes double. Because it's double, it's called birefringence. But now, if we put a pair of sunglasses in front of it, one or the other of the image disappears. What this is telling us is that the light that comes through with more biofringent material, it's itself plain polarized. And I'll explain polarization in a minute. But in any event, so biofringence, uh, biofringent material um, takes uh, ordinary light and then splits it into two. And that split, split light itself becomes polarized. So now what we're going to do is to take two birefringent material, uh, two porosium material. Here is porosium material I'm putting under the birefringent, uh, under the crystal. And then depending on how I set the crystal, we should be able to see two images. Uh, now, then when we put a second polarizing material above and cross the two, then we still see the birefringent material. As I turn the crystal, then the image becomes brighter or darker. And this is the property of birefringence. Calcite is not only interesting as a special mineral that has strong birefringence, but also it occurs in many of our body structures. And for example, in bone and teeth and so on, one of the mineral components is calcite. And if we look at a sea urchin embryo, for example, we see in a young embryo, tiny little spicules, which are made of pure calcite, and those show as birefringence. Instead of the calcite crystal, I'm going to put a birefringent biological sample here, which uh, you may just be able to see or not be able to see because the contrast is terribly weak uh, between cross polarizers. But now I'm going to put another birefringent material, and it should become brighter or darker. So this is a model of a mitotic spindle, which is weakly birefringent. In fact, the birefringence is only uh, a few hundreds or thousands 
of the biofringes of the calcite crystal you saw. So we need this compensator in order to see which way the molecules are lined up and what the biofringes material itself behaves just like the calcite crystal separately depending on the orientation of the material. What the biofringence is showing us is that molecules are lined up. And what I'm doing is taking this piece of plastic and pulling it so that the molecules line up. It should become bright and even show color. And then this is biofringent, just like the other material. But as you see here, lining up the molecule um, made this biofringent material, change it into bi biofringent material. I'll demonstrate the same effect by using sound waves, although sound is somewhat different from light waves. I've cut a piece of wood here so that one block is running parallel to the grain and the other is across the grain and sound travels much faster along the grain than across the grain. So when I tap on the edge of this, then you'll find the resonance sound. This is parallel to the grain, and this is across the grain. Uh, you see it, there's almost an octave difference because sound travels twice as fast along the grain than across the grain. So this is acoustic anisotropy, somewhat similar to uh, optical anisotropy, except there is a fundamental difference between sound and light. Sound travels faster in denser medium, whereas light travels slower in denser media. So this distinction you should remember. But anyhow, this is um, double, ref double refraction of a kite.